future mobile device, ladies and gentlemen, is a device that's converged. It's typically going to be a smartphone or a, P or a wireless PDA, typically being able to handle many, many different functions. But WiMAX is for data. Its main purpose is for data. And this company here, VSIM, is, is the leading company making WiMAX silicon for all types of form factor devices. Picochip is actually here in China. And it's a UK company. Sequins is a French company. We'll talk a little bit more about Intel, but there are actually over 50 companies with fixed and mobile WiMAX chips. Fixed means it's wireless, but it's fixed at a position. It's not movable. Well, mobile means you can actually be in a car, in a train, and be able to get a decent quality of service with the wireless technology in a, as it's moving. So that's what, and quite honestly, people are deploying fixed right now, and they have been deploying fixed for at least a year, a year and a half, but mobile is really the future. Why have fixed if you can do mobile? Because mobile can be fixed as well. But if you have the capability to be mobile, that's best. Next, I call it dragon chips, essentially. A bunch of companies going after the dragon. Mobile WiMAX. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So, is WiMAX going into the developing world, or is it going to the third world? Because I think I just talked about the United States, how it's going to be a WiMAX country. Well, what, what about the third world? What about the emerging markets around the world? Why do people want WiMAX? <coughs> cheaper to deploy. Cheaper to deploy, and it solves the last mile, and it leapfrogs technology in countries where there was no existing fixed copper in the ground, or even fiber in the ground. So think about this. I don't need a DSL connection. I don't need a cable connection to get high-speed broadband services in and around rural communities around third world countries or around any place. And America has plenty of places where you can't get wireless. So the bottom line is now you can get wireless because it's coming from the air. Actually, but honestly, wireless still depends on wireline, doesn't it, actually? But in, generally speaking, this technology is cheaper to deploy. It covers a 30-mile range, typically. And that technology improves as well with the, with the better development of base, station base stations and pico cells in routers and all kinds of peripheral equipment that compose WiMAX technology. But it will go into the emerging markets. I predict that India and China will be the two largest countries in the world deploying mobile WiMAX. Again, my prediction, that's just my prediction. Next. Right now, we have in China a situation where TDS-CDMA has I mean, it's going to be very, very popular here in China because the government wants it to be, essentially. 3G technology in China means TDS-CDMA. In, in the beginning, it's going to mean TDS-CDMA. But quite honestly, WCDMA and CDMA 2000 are going to have their place in China. Even though China is practicing techno-nationalism right now, bottom line is the Chinese don't want to uh, pay a lot of money for royalties. There's nothing wrong with that strategy. There's nothing wrong with that strategy. The Chinese also realize that if they don't allow these other 3G protocols to have capability to be sold and used in country, actually it's not very smart for the Chinese government to just try to expect the whole world to buy into TDS CDMA. It isn't going to happen. But the start will be the Olympics, the O8 Olympics. TDS CDMA is supposed to be the, um, the crown jewel of their wireless technologies, which will be deployed and used during the O8 Olympics. There's a lot of time between now and the OA Olympics. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. I make no predictions there. But what I do say is that a bunch of companies, Huawei, Huawei, Zhongxing, ZTE, Xiaxing, Amoy, these companies have been working on these converged mobile devices with Wi-Fi, WiMAX, and 3G. And quite honestly, these, and, and by the way, ZTE introduced the first TDMS, TDS, CDMA, and GSM dual mode handset. Let's move on. Next, please. <coughs> Chinese carriers have been investing in TDS CDMA for about two years now. About two years. Chinese government has wanted to put TDS CDMA for about five years. This is not short-term planning. And China Telecom, Netcom, and, Mo and China Mobile 
They've been running uh, rural uh, trial TDMA, uh, TDS CDMA networks in a bunch of provinces, and China Mobile has won the first 3G contract. Uh, sorry.